Hey, everybody, and welcome to the first ever episode of Frank About Health from the Beverly Hilton in Los Angeles, California. I actually had it all set up in my mind to show you the backdrop, but due to technical situations and beyond my control, I just thought, you know what? It's best to be in the environment and we can discuss Hilton later. But the bottom line is we're moving around the, we're moving around the country and various Hiltons going forward with, on this particular uh, program because the purpose is to show what life looks like post COVID. Now that all being said, I wanna talk with you about uh, my special guest today, Mr. Ryan Hurd, who has been definitely looking at what life is like post caregiving. Now, let me be more specific in what I mean by that. We all know that when we were dealing with the pandemic, that we were dealing with something that none of us were prepared for. We didn't know how to solve it. We didn't know how to heal it. We didn't know how to test it. We all had to just roll with the punches, explore what we could to keep our loved ones safe as well as ourselves, as, as safe as possible. And in turn, we were able to find solutions. Well, in Ryan's case, which I will let him tell you when I finally have gone through his story, he's dealing with a crisis in his father's life, a medical crisis that actually he and I share and will discuss also on this episode of Frank About Health. And he was able to really look at the events of his life at that time and come up with something very innovative, which we're going to learn more about today. And it's part of his organization, um, Caregiver Smart Solutions. And it is for taking care of your loved ones who are aging in place, regardless of what their issue is. It could be cancer. It could be Alzheimer's. It could be um, uh, wandering out. It could be uh, some other elderly disorder that's keeping them immobile. They could be having falls. The bottom line is it makes caregiving for the elderly more seamless as well as less stressful. And again, we have to learn more about that. But I have to tell you uh, all about Ryan Hurd before I introduce him. He is an accomplished author, patent holder, and TEDx speaker who has made a name for himself in the world of smart technology. However, his passion for this field goes beyond professional. As I mentioned, he was a caregiver to his father, Ryan, and um, has first experience of the challenges that caregivers face every day. In response, I already mentioned he founded Caregiver Smart Solutions. He offers a suite of tools designed specifically to help caregivers monitor their loved ones using non-invasive sensors. Now, before I fully introduce you, Ryan, I want to show a previous TED Talk where you talk about those sensors. This is the most powerful sensor out there. And these sensors are looking at the habits of your loved one. We all have habits, right? I'm sure this morning you got up, clearly you're here. <laughs> you went to the bathroom, you got something to eat. Maybe you made your coffee, your tea, you went in front of the TV, or you tapped on the computer. And you know as well as I do, habits are hard to break. Have you ever tried changing the habit of an 85-year-old? <laughs> Not going to happen. But when habits do change, there's a wealth of information that you can find out from that. And by having tiny non-invasive sensors placed discreetly around the home, you can start finding out things. Not only will you find out things like, did mom get up? But what time did mom get up? Is mom eating enough? Is she going to the bathroom? Is she taking a shower? Because hygiene is really important. How about, is your loved one drinking enough? Did you know that dehydration is the number one precursor to a fall? Yeah. Is she taking her medication? Is she taking it at the right time? And of course, did she fall? More importantly, where did she fall? Okay, I just to give that pivot moment before I fully introduce you because typically what I do on the show, Ryan, is I do a disclaimer showing that the, these are not the 
it's kind of comments of talkradio.nyc or uh, of Frank about health. But you have. Uh oh, I think we broke up. <laughs> Well, it looks like uh, Frank's having a little bit of technical difficulties, but I do want An innovative to thank Frank <laughs> for Frank about health. I mean, this I really do appreciate being on here today. Uh, the most interesting thing right now is we have the East and the West Coast. I am over here in New Jersey, Frank idea. Is out there in California right now. And, uh, you know, sometimes there is technical that people, difficulties, but he will be coming back know, pretty soon. <laughs> know about, period. We're not giving away any information that is going to violate any medical rights or things like that. So we can forgive the disclaimer and at the same time discuss your background. So welcome to this episode, Frank, of Frank. Well, there you go. How are you, Frank? You were breaking up a little bit uh, there. Can you hear us now there, Frank? Help. Uh, I think Frank is still having some uh, technical difficulties, but that's okay because the world keeps on going forward. And I really appreciate you having me on, Frank. So, my name is Ryan Hurd. I'm the founder of Caregiver Smart Solutions, and I've been doing technology, smart home oh. stuff, IoT stuff for 30 years. And um, I wrote a book, as uh, Frank said, called Join the Smart Home Revolution. And I've been talking about technology uh, for all of us, all the different age groups, how you can use technology, what's important to the different age groups, and all those kind of things. And unfortunately, uh, my father got cancer, and it started when he started getting his chemo treatments. I was concerned, you know, uh, like anybody else, I'm concerned about his well being. And it, it started specifically with a medication that he had to take for his neuropathy, where his fingers and his toes, he couldn't feel them. Um, and this medication he had to take once a day in a 24-hour cycle. So if he took it at one, he would have to take it at one o'clock the next day. That was the first thing that I was concerned about. And then from there, it lead, led to, did dad get up? You know, is he moving around? Uh, all of these, what they call activities of daily living, but I didn't know what it was called. I was just worried about dad. So that was actually the start of Caregiver Smart Solutions. Frank, are you there, buddy? Yeah. A little bit. He's kind of breaking in and out. Mm. Something's breaking up. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I also got a notification that I was being lost. I don't know. Um, D Dylan, give me a Are thumbs up if you've got me back. Yes. I think he's lost. Yes. Put the back in there. Mm. So, I mean, this is really bad. Yeah, it's probably the Wi-Fi there. Unfortunately, it's having a bad day. Well, that is the way that it goes, everyone. <laughs> Every once in a while, technology is kind of like my kids. It just doesn't listen. But I do appreciate if you're uh, patient with us. Let's see if we can get this thing back together and have a wonderful conversation because Frank does have a very interesting backstory. Mm. 
Uh, are we still there? Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy. And I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are we back? Are you on edge? Hey, we live in challenging, edgy uh, times, so let's lean in. I'm Sandra Bargeman, the host of The Edge of Every Day, which airs each Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. Tune in live with me and my friends and colleagues as we share stories and perspectives about pushing boundaries and exploring our rough edges. That's The Edge of Every Day on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. That was a lesson in technical difficulties that I think I have just learned for the first time. Uh, Ryan, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you saw my comments. First of all, are we all together? Are we in the same space? Are we all communicating? Is every, everything clear? Frank, I hear you. You're frozen, but that's okay. At least I can hear you now. Okay. So maybe that's the curse that I'm getting for not issuing a disclaimer <laughs> at the beginning of the show. I'm, I'm literally going to look at this like America's Funniest Videos or TV's Censored Bloopers or whatever you want to call it. Why don't we do this? I'm making an official proposal to you and all the listeners and viewers out, viewers out there. I'm going to be back in New York next Thursday. I'll have full-blown Ethernet connection. We can have another show together really fleshing out all about your technology. But let's just share about the caregiving story that led you to your invention. I'll share you mine. And then while we flesh out the content of our history, we can really embrace the technology, your business, and really do the, the service it deserves in promoting it on all the platforms, including talkradio.nyc. Are you, are you, are you game for having a, a, a follow-up to this episode <laughs> next Thursday? Frank, I am game, I got to tell you. But... You know, this is the way uh, life is, right? Sometimes there's bumps in the road and you just got to kind of go with it. You know, as this shows, technology isn't perfect yet, which is one of the reasons why I have so much gray hair. I like to say technology is like my kids. It just doesn't listen all the time. We'd like it to be perfect, but uh, what are you going to do? Either way, I do want to say I appreciate you having me on, Frank, about health. New York Talk yes. Radio. I think it's exciting. I love your backstory. And there's so much information that you can bring to the table that can actually help people. And that's what this is all about, right? Yes, exactly. I mean, as everyone knows that have watched the last 72 shows that I've done or so, that it all began with epilepsy. And then, of course, COVID, of course, had its own narrative for everybody. But over the last year and a half or so that I've been with talkradio.nyc, and thanks to Sam, who also introduced us to each other, I, I just feel that there is so much about healthcare, knowledge, and information, and self-management that most people, unfortunately, don't grasp until there's a crisis. And I think your story defines what to do during or after a crisis has been averted. 
you know, so that's yeah. why I find your technology very innovative. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, as we were talking about backstories, I told your listeners a little bit about it while you were breaking up. But, uh, right. you know, for the last 30 years, I've spent uh, my time in technology and smart home and IoT, all of that great stuff that you see that's out there. And I wrote a book called Join the Smart Home Revolution. And it's really talking about how smart technologies can help us as humans. And, and I, I give a lot of lectures and presentations about the different age groups and what's important. You know, For example, I mean, I know you and your listeners aren't that old, but in my day, you know, if you can believe it, when I grew up, the phone was actually bolted to the wall and there was actually a wire plugged into it and you know, if you wanted some some quietness, you'd have to go down to a store that was called Radio Shack, and you had to yes. buy a longer wire so you can like kind of go around the corner. So a lot of people don't uh, remember those days, but unlike you know my son, my youngest son, who is ten years old, you know, think about it. He's literally growing up in a world that doesn't have buttons. Everything is touch. Everything is swipe, and, and that's his whole world. So. What does that mean as we get older? Does that mean that we're going to adopt technology more? Um, the younger ones will, and I think that's going to be great. But let's say my, you know, my 75-year-old father, the last time he was in the workforce, what we're doing right now, I mean, I think it's amazing. You're in Beverly Hills on the West Coast. I'm in New Jersey on the East Coast. That, that would be a $100,000 Cisco or Polycom system. And here, we're doing yeah. it from Zoom. So this is just one of the, the, the ways of showing how technology can bring all of us from all the different walks of life and all the different communities together. Exactly, exactly. I mean, the thing that I wanted to share uh, that we have in common is that my father was also dealing with cancer right. and I was doing what I could to not only be his caregiver, but when we're all quarantined in the same home together and I'm struck down with COVID, I also find myself as a possible disruptor <laughs> and i i like the word disruptor when it means their innovation is along the way but in that particular case i didn't know what to expect so at least what i what i saw with your situation and your story i don't know if you saw the ted talks that i played back clearly did that come through okay yeah a little bit of the ted talk did come through um it's interesting because funny thing I haven't watched my own TED Talk, which is a little embarrassing. I have to go back and, and watch it. <laughs> yes. No, well, either way, I took the soundbite that pointed out that it was your innovation that allowed you to come up with a technology so that you can take care of them while you're not around. Right. And that is what I actually needed when I had COVID and my father <laughs> has cancer. <laughs> well, you know what it is? It, it, when they... You know, when you look at it and say, you know, what problem are you solving? It's it's simply this. It's wherever your loved one lives, whether it's in the home you grew up, whether it's in New York City, whether it's an apartment, a condo, even an assisted living facility. When they close that front door, it's a black hole of information. You have no idea what's going on. And all you want is to be a fly on the wall. I just want to know right. if dad got up. I want to know if mom's moving around or are they eating? Did they take the medication? Or as I said, God forbid, did they fall? But more importantly, where did they fall? So right. these are the kind of things that are the problems that we're solving. And, and I just want to give you more peace of mind because if you have more peace of mind, you can even have a little more time back in your life. So if you have to run out and get the groceries or or whatever, there, there's a tool that can help you um, monitor your loved one as they age in place. You know, and it's funny, I could consider that this would be the perfect tool for someone like myself who was also t taking the time to take care of my cousin who's only 63 yeah. years old and now has Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's disease. Yeah. So while I'm able to work on the administrative side of things, appoint her son to be her CDPAP worker get her yeah. proxied at the NYU Langone Health System so that she gets coverage for all of her treatments. At the same time, work on getting her to retire early with Social Security so she can become eligible for Medicare. I know how to do all of that, but she's up in Harlem and I'm all the way in the 20s. I'm not able to take care of her, but the technology model that you illustrate, like in the case of your dad, 
is something that would have benefited me not only in terms of monitoring when she did wander off one night and I wasn't around, I heard about it, or monitoring what the office is of all the applications that I'm filing on her behalf could be getting back to me and therefore I can get back to all the necessary people on her camp. You know, so it's a whole integrated technology platform that I think whether you are a caregiver or you are dealing with another type of treatment protocol for any other diso uh, disorder, there is just a need for AI technology across the board. I think you're just in a leadership pos position with a segment of the population, as you mentioned in the TED Talk, that yeah. is growing tremendously into the senior years above 85, or I think you said 65 to 85, and we're going to need to have technology as part of the regimen of caregiving. It's not going to be something, if only I had, or this is only for select people. This is right. a must for all of us, I believe. Yeah, and mm -hmm. what happens is it gives you the clarity of care. So right. it's been called, or we've been hearing things like aging in place, living in place, and even help at home. So how do we know if our loved one is uh, you know, eating enough or, or drinking right. enough? And, and this is how technology can actually help us as humans. And, and when you look at the data, you know, it's amazing. When we look at the US today, and you say there's 55 million Americans that are 65 and older. But by 2030, which is only what, seven years, seven years, seven years from now, it's yeah. expected to be 75 million people that are 65 and older. And I'm not saying that everybody at 65 needs help. What I'm saying is as a society, we're getting older. And you know, I don't know about you, but I am not running as fast as I used to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I would have to say the same thing as you as you witnessed in the first segment of this show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But perfect point. You know, we all want to be around for as long as possible. And right. sometimes there's bumps in the road. But how do we get ahead of problems? Right. And whether whether your mother is three states away or whether she's three blocks away or even if it's a mother and daughter kind of a house and you leave you still want to know if that person is okay, especially when we're talking about dementia. You know, what is the most important thing that you want to know? Number one, did that person walk out of the house? And then God forbid, number two, did they leave the stove on? Those are right. the most important things. So to have that information in the palm of your hand is game changing. And that's how oh, yeah. we are changing the world. Yes. That was also a question I was going to ask you. I went, when we first started talking, you had used that that phrase, we're going to change the world, almost like a mantra of yours. Yeah. Is that What would you say is the reason why that became part of your everyday language? Was it your passion for what you've invented for the elder market or, or the caregiving market? Or is it based on the trauma you must have felt at the time when you didn't have these resources, when you were watching your father go through his cancer treatment? You know what it was, you know, as I said before, you know, I've spent 30 years in technology and, and I love it. I'm a geek. I love technology and, and all that stuff. I really like the stuff that helps us as humans. I mean, that's what really gets me excited. But right. when my father, uh, you know, was coming home from his chemo, originally I put a camera in there and literally he threw a dish towel right over it. And then I took the dish towel down and he put a dog toy in front of it. It was kind of funny. You know, this guy's, he's tough as nails and he's got a sense of humor. Right. But right. the aha moment really came when I, I, after trying to figure out what I'm going to do here, and I, I used some off the shelf stuff and it, it wasn't working for me. So I, I developed, I, I basically duct taped my own solution together. And it was working. It was giving me what I, I needed to know. And then I used my grandmother and then I started talking about it because I was always giving presentations about technology. And then I started talking about how the future of technology is going to help us age in place right. and really live in place, right? How do we live our golden years where we want to uh, independently and with dignity? And when I started talking about that, people were like, we need this. You have to... You know, you have to make this into something I can use. And that's where Caregiver Smart Solutions was born. Now, with that mm. said, 
you know, when we started putting the product out there and when people started using it, I remember this one time where a client called us and she was so happy. She was crying on the phone. She was telling me how amazing this was. And that was the exact point that all of a sudden I'm like, I've been giving a chance to really change the world. I mean, technology is great and all, and all the stuff that we use is, is phenomenal. But when you can actually use your expertise and it can actually change somebody's life, it can reduce their stress, it can give them a little more peace of mind, now you realize you're doing the right thing for humans. And that's really, that has been ingrained in me. That is my focus. That's why we say, you know, by caregivers for caregivers, because I'm a caregiver like you, you know, I'm walking the walk, I'm talking the talk, and I am looking for those tools that can help as many of us as possible. Absolutely. And like I, like I was telling you, I found that my knowledge and media based probably on my entertainment industry experience or even just my knowledge of Zoom technology, which we all learned, especially during the COVID pandemic, um, it became a passion to continue to educate and advocate and communicate healthcare. But at the end of the day, it's, it, it really is a bridge or it really is a pathway that I walk towards people like yourself or people that have been on the show or people that will be on the show because we're creating a community. But we all know, as it was clear from your TED Talks and e even from our conversations, that it is technology. Technology is and artificial intelligence is the wave of making sure that we have the maximum amount of healthcare in this country going forward. I really believe that. And speaking about going forward, we're about to take our, I believe this is our second break. Uh, as we continue our conversation with Ryan Hood, Ryan Hurd of Caregiver Smart Solutions right here on talkradio.nyc and on all of our socials, so please stay tuned. Are you passionate about the conversation around racism? Hi, I'm Reverend Dr. TLC, host of the Dismantle Racism Show, which airs every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Join me and my amazing guests as we discuss ways to uncover, dismantle, and eradicate racism. That's Thursdays at 11 o'clock a.m. on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back. Uh, Ryan, there is definitely no other uh, word that I can come up with uh, for this show other than collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> that I is think true. The way you were able to talk me through while I saw everything crashing and burning in the first segment of the show, I literally thought the show was done and that we were just going to be out of conversation. But in the last segment, we managed to cover a lot of information and really change the narrative around instead of a marketing presentation, which I was really more thinking towards. We could save that for later. But uh, 
the fleshing out the story and the motivation and the inner passion that you have for caregiving. Um, I looked at a series of questions. You actually answered them while you were speaking. The <laughs> only one question that I think would be perfect for this segment is if you could show us and demonstrate um, what your app does. Uh, I know there's a yeah. video that I would like to show, but I'm not going to show videos anymore <laughs> after what happened earlier. I figure um, your question in, is basically, uh, could you walk me through some of the key benefits that users can expect? Maybe if you have the app in front of you or you would be able to run through it and, and illustrate it. I, I would like to see a demonstration if you have the ability yeah. to do so. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'd like to, I'm going to talk through it because I know this is also talk radio. And then for everybody that's on that YouTube, you'd be able to see it as well. So well, yeah, gonna, and all you listeners out there, if you have any questions, please type them in the chat box and we'll answer them live. Just if you, if you can hear us. <laughs> all right. So I, what we sell is called the core kit. And it, it's the philosophy around it is it's really the core of the family. So if we're going to be the fly on the wall, what we want to do is we want to allow our loved one to live as independently for as long as possible with dignity. So by saying that, we need a way to do that. And that's where Caregiver Smart Solutions comes in. It's a tool. And what we're doing is we're looking at that person's habits because habits are, as I said, they're very hard to break, right? I, I clearly have a habit of eating too much ice cream and cookies, so I have to run <laughs> to take care of that stuff. But in the meantime, mm -hmm. let me show you. So this is live, uh, and let's see if everything's going to work here. Okay. okay, can you see that? Yes. That is the core monitoring kit by Caregiver Smart Solutions. So when you order this, it's going to show up by FedEx or UPS, you're gonna open it up and you're gonna first see a planogram. So you'll be able to see what sensors and what they're used for in the box. You're also going to see a paper that has a QR code. Uh, just to give you an idea how simple this is, you literally scan the QR code with your phone, which downloads the app. You then take the hub, plug it in, and then you peel and stick the sensors and put them throughout the house. So it's literally that simple. Now, here I am showing you, can you see that Frank right yes. there? Yes. That's a quarter. The yes. sensors are the size of a quarter. Now the question is, why is that important? Well, it's important because nobody wants to feel like they're being spied on, right? So you want right. the smallest yet the most powerful sensor out there. And that's what we're doing. We're using a combi combination of sensors sensors for movement, sensors for doors. So for example, let's say the front door, or maybe a side door, uh, maybe a medicine cabinet, maybe a, uh, you know, the refrigerator. So this way you can see, are they eating? Um, other yes. things are temperature and humidity sensors. Generally, we're using them in bathrooms because we want to know that your loved one is taking a shower, you know, like every three days or so, because hygiene is really important. And then, yes. of course, we have these red buttons and they're emergency buttons. And that, that comes down to our philosophy, which is, you know, if you can get mom or dad, whoever your loved one is, to wear something, that's great. But what we found is they generally take them off when they go home because they feel like they're safe at home. And they should be. But unfortunately, right. most events happen in the home. So for us, it was important to have redundancy. So we uh, included three emergency buttons. Think of one for the bathroom, maybe one for the kitchen and one for, you know, next to mom's favorite chair in the living room. So if something happens and if she can get to it, she can push the button. If not, we'll still pick up the fall. Now, the next question is, well, where, where does all this data go? Where, when the sensors pick up something, what happens to it? Well, let me show you. Again, this is live, everybody. So let's see if this <laughs> works. All right. Let's uh, open up the phone. All right, here we go. There we go. Can you see that? Yes. All right. Well, I happen to be working on a green screen and my uh, icons are green, so they are a little hard to see, but let me walk you through it. So mm -hmm. for this person, I actually had her trigger one of the sensors. So you can see that it says check on loved one because of the medicine cabinet. So that happens. Yeah. 
when your loved one doesn't open up the medicine cabinet. So if this person was supposed to, and she was supposed to open it up already, I had her trigger the sensor. So this way you could see the difference between when something happens or when something's okay. The other right. thing that you can see here really quick is you can see the outside temperature and the inside temperature. So the question is, why is that important? Well, you know, if uh, let's say grandma was in Calgary, ca uh, Canada right now, do you have any clue how hot or cold it is? I have no idea. But if it was, let's say, 40 degrees outside and inside was 70, well, then everything's okay. But right. if it was 40 degrees outside and 50 inside, that's a problem. So that's one of the benefits of being the fly in the wall and then having those indicators. So if it, let's say I want to know every time it hits 32 degrees or lower, you can have that pop up uh, in the app. So that's the kind of power that we're talking about. And then within this, you can see exactly like right now, she's uh, moving around in the master bathroom and she's going between the master bathroom and the dining room. Uh, a couple mm -hmm. of minutes ago, she was in the kitchen. Uh, let's take, she opened up the front door twice today. Let's take a look at the fridge. So the fridge, mm -hmm. she opened up twice today on average. She opens it up 10 times a day. And let's say you want to dig deep into the information. You could literally go to the next page. You can see things like, you know, the battery's good. It's currently closed. And you can literally see when she's opened up the door. So if you had to look and find out, okay, how many times is she opening up? What times is it usually in the morning and not at night? This is where you right. get all that information. And that's what makes this system so powerful compared to really anything else. And it, 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 it does exactly what I say, which is, I just want to be a fly in the wall. I just want to know mom's okay. She's up, she's moving around and all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes perfect sense. So here's the thing. I have a question first about the quarter size sensors and then the ultimate question as to what if you're finding information that really is alarming. So let's start small. Yep. The thing is, I can understand why you want to have the quarter size sensors around. So it's like it looks like a quarter. It doesn't seem right. ominous. It doesn't give a feeling of paranoia that I'm being watched or observed or stuff right. like that. But when the individual father or mother or sibling or grandparent is watching that quarter out of nowhere, I mean, don't they suspect that it's odd? Or what do you <laughs> find to be the concern that maybe they don't take the quarter away or prevent the right. sensor from working effectively. So what we what we suggest is that you you peel and stick and you mount it to the wall. And we usually say around molding. So let's say by a door, over a door. So let's take the bathroom. So in the bathroom, let me show you again. In the bathroom, I would take one of these movement sensors and the temperature yeah. and humidity sensor. And I would put them right above the molding looking into the bathroom. Now, again, when I say looking, I don't mean that it's a camera. These are not cameras. I can't see anything. I'm just saying from a, a technology digital standpoint, uh, we need to know that that person went into the bathroom and then came out of the bathroom because we are tracking that person's habits. So that's one way to make them go away and, you know, it's again, it's about dignity and nobody wants to feel like they're being spied on. Right, right. But I, how are they then measuring what they're doing? Is it through their 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 temperature that they're exuding? Uh, is it their biorhythms? Uh, what is it that <laughs> they're able to detect? What does these sensors are able to detect, yeah. especially if it's not a camera? How is it feeding you data about their behavior? Well, the interesting thing is when you look at this, you tend to look at it as, as sensors and, and doohickeys and thingamajigs, right? But in reality, yeah. they're data points. So this is where machine learning and artificial intelligence comes in. So these are data points that are mapping your loved one's habits. So over time, we kind of get a baseline. So let's say mom, you know, she generally gets up at 630 and she goes to bed at 10 o'clock. We kind of know her rhythms. We kind of know how she is. Um, we're looking at other things. Like I said, uh, is she eating or drinking enough? Because we are a closed loop system. So basically whatever goes in, 
must come out. So we can extrapolate by saying, well, if she's opening up the fridge so many times a day, you know, I expect her to be going to the bathroom once or twice a day. So, so it's things correct. like that. And other things that we've learned is, unfortunately, our aging loved ones tend to self-isolate because they don't want to impact anybody else, right? Maybe they're a little right. slower. Maybe they're using a walker. Maybe it's a little harder to get around. The problem is, is when they self-isolate, you know, you're not thinking about how much you're drinking, right? You might have a cup of coffee, maybe some tea, but you and I, you know, we're going all over the place. You're out in Beverly Hills right now. So I'm sure you're thinking about, you know, you got a water bottle, you drink that, you go to your next meeting, you know, it's just kind of habits. But when you're sitting at home alone, we tend, we're not really thinking about it. And that's when, you know, mom gets up out of her living room chair and then boom, you know, her blood pressure drops. It's because of dehydration and then she falls. And that is the worst possible thing for our aging loved ones. Exactly. Now, I guess then if you're noticing a continual pattern, like you mentioned the example of going to open the refrigerator and then eventually expelling whatever she consumed, let's right. say one day comes where she opened the refrigerator 10 times and didn't go to the bathroom for five days. That's a problem. That's a problem. Like, how, how do you know when it's a red flag? What is it that, especially if you're not in the room when this is happening, you're having this, these sensors report to you on your app. Right their behavior and you're noticing a break in the pattern when do you know it's an urgent concern or it's just a, a matter of fact concern so something like that let's take that specifically if mom is opening up the fridge a lot and we presume that she's eating and it's been 24 hours since she's gone to the bathroom that's when you're going to find out because that that's that's out of the norm now it might be normal for mom not to use the bathroom for 12 hours straight might be normal but right those are the, the things that are outside of the norm are the, are the things that you want to know. And the great thing about the app is you can tweak it for what's important to you. So as we said before, if somebody has dementia, you want to know immediately if that person opened that door. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So you can have that happen. Oh, so I, I'm, I'm inferring from what you've just said that your technology is pro programming the app to have little alarms go off, like, for example, after 24 hours of no bathroom participation, let's say, you know, or if, for example, she goes from 10, 10, 10 to one, you know, like, what were you doing that day? Did you leave the house? So yeah. at least you're saying it's all pre-programmed in those sensors to alert you when something is not operating on normal baseline. Correct. Well, we're about to take our final break, and then we're going to talk about the future, including your appearance next week, right here on Frank About Health. So everybody on talkradio.nyc, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, if you have any questions, please put them in our chat box while we are still live for the next 15 minutes so we can answer them live in real time. All right, stay tuned. We'll be back. Hey everybody, it's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. In a post-COVID world, you may have many unanswered questions regarding your health. Are you looking to live a healthier lifestyle? Do you have a desire to learn more about mental health and enhance your quality of life? Or do you just want to participate in self-understanding and awareness? I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each Thursday, I will tackle these questions and work to enlighten you. Tune in every Thursday at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will be Frank About Health to advocate for all of us. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your conscious consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc.
You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Welcome back. And so, Ryan, I have to tell you, uh, I love the demonstration you provided. For a moment, I thought we were actually on QVC. <laughs> no, I mean, in terms of the fact that it was engaging, and if I was in a position to do a conversion, meaning purchase it, I would do that. Um, so I'm recommending to all the caregivers out there that this is seriously a product that is going to be worthwhile if you have the fortune um, to invest in it, or if you really need it based on the behavioral patterns you are observing from your elderly father or mother or grandparent or any other loved one. As I mentioned earlier, I'm dealing with someone who's clearly close to my age group, who's now living the life really of in the 85 category, like you mentioned in that TED Talk video. And it's, and it's, it's alarming because I'm also not in the same environment with her at all. So I just get different stories from her caregivers and right. all it does is provoke anxiety, and, and all I can do is the paperwork of what I can do to find the protection financially or otherwise, but I can't actually caregive. If she, God forbid, goes away somewhere and no one finds her, she's MIA. It's as simple as that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, but I don't want to be in that vulnerable spot, so I know that going forward, if I find myself needing this technology, I will be a, a consumer of it. Um, I was going to show uh, the YouTube video showing the data as well as a little bit of the demonstration, but we're going to save that for next week. I think you did more justice with your demonstration. Would you like to tell the listeners and viewers where else you will be demonstrating or talking about uh, caregiver smart solutions in the near future? Oh, we are all over the place. I really do appreciate that. We have the health uh, conference coming up, which is going to be in Tampa next month in May. Um, mm -hmm. We also are on Caregiving Worldwide TV, which is a night, it's an exciting uh, new TV program specifically uh, geared towards caregiver, caregivers' lives, and caregiving. So that is really exciting. I, I do like uh, doing this. There's a lot of people like yourself, Frank, that are elevating the caregiving community. And the interesting thing is, like anybody else, you know, I, I never called myself a caregiver. Right. We we just say, you know, I'm taking care of dad. I'm taking care of mom. I'm taking care of whoever. And then we start Googling. Right. We're tapping on a computer and looking for resources. And then they call us a caregiver. The reality is, is that we all want to do the right thing. Right. We're human. We want to take care of our aging loved ones because they took they took care of us. And when they're, right. you're a block away or a state away or even on another continent, it would be great to be that fly in the wall. And even for situations where you are trying to figure out, should I get some non-medical in-home you know, care, like a, a visiting angels or a bright star right. or comfort keepers, right? Well, mm -hmm. what do I need? How, how many hours do I need? How many times should they be there? So this is a great tool. As we say, you know, caregiver smart solutions is a tool to help you monitor your loved one as they age in place. And that's because, let's face it, caregiving is, uh, it's stressful. And you just want a little more peace of mind and time back in your life. You know, and what I've learned by default, and I think COVID kind of pushed the issue on my level with my father's situation. Um, I think when caregivers or people become caregivers mm. without even applying for the job, they just by right. default become it. It's like the, the, the the secret that you need to be prepared for, which I think your business has already done that, or at least demonstrated that there are ways that others that are not as fortunate to come up with the innovation can learn from you on that. But there is an individual that actually appeared here on Frank About Health about a year and a half ago. It ended up being my co-host. Her name is Phyllis Quinlan, and wow. she is part of an organization called sharethecare.org which is also an organization that turns family members into team members so they can go ahead on one member takes care of the of the parent or grandparent on a Monday, the other one does it on a Tuesday, whatever. Still, what is missing from the Share the Care organization 
is a technology platform. So that's someone I'm going to introduce to you because she also, as I said, was my co-host on Frank About Health for, for 40 specific episodes on caregiving and nursing and Reiki and energy healing and other kinds of things that are all for those people that are just palliat in palliative care, basically. Yeah, I love that idea. I think that's great to have a team approach. And, and the other thing to think about is, do you have any idea how many hours in a week? I'll tell you, there's 168 hours in a week and we just can't cover all of them. So here's a way right. that you can leverage today's technology to be there for those 168 hours every single week. Right, right. But the 168, I think I saw, I saw you mention that to another person you, you had a conversation with. And you said that of the 168, there's only 160 hours you use. Where did the other eight go? <laughs> yeah. So what happens is generally when you have in-home uh, care, so let's say um, you're helping dad, right? And it gets to a point where I, I just can't do it all the time. I need some help. So you call an in-home services uh, uh, company, uh, non-medical, somebody just to come over and, and help dad. So you can go out and you could do these, these talks and whatnot. Generally, right. they start at four hours a day, twice, twice a week. So that ends up being eight hours. But as I said, there's 168 hours in a week. So what about those other 160 hours? Here's a way that we can still monitor our loved ones. So if you had to run out and go to the store or go to an interview, or maybe you're still in the workforce and you're just worried about your loved ones. So here's a way that you can literally just see from the app that mom is okay and everything's fine. So you can then go and focus you know, back on work or maybe it's family, kids, whatever. Mm, amazing, amazing. Well, you know what? I, I am definitely looking forward to for us to really go into the nuts and bolts of everything next Thursday. I think I'm going to turn next Thursday, first of all, same time zone, ethernet <laughs> connections abound. And we're just going to really cover the kind of exposure you've already been presented with. Uh, I, I presume the TED Talks was something you arranged with a team of people, or was that arranged for you? Were you invited into that? Yeah. So TED Talk for the, the big TED Talks, you have to be invited. So I was honored to be uh, invited by Dr. Debbie Lyons. Um, she is phenomenal. And uh, I flew down to um, Hilton Head Island. And I did that last November. So it was a great experience. I really appreciate everybody down there. Uh, and, and again, I, I can't wait to do my next one. I am so excited about it. Well, I tried to do my own version at the Beverly Hilton, but I know <laughs> I was in testing territory. <laughs> well, I hear you. All right. Either way, um, I guess the other things I want to uh, announce about the future is for those of you listening to our shows each week here on Frank About Health, you know our Friday slate of shows include Always Friday with Stephen Fry, uh, beginning uh, in the morning with Philanthropy and Focus with Tommy D, and ending uh, the week with Intangify with Matthew Asbell. So please stay tuned for those shows tomorrow. For all of you who who stood with us during the first trying 15 minutes of this show and the 45 minute conversation that ensued afterwards. I thank you for staying with patience. And I just want to be uh, as respectful of Ryan as possible. So stay tuned for his return next week, right here on Frank about health. It will be at Hilton, but on the East coast. And, um, I guess also you basically gave me a list of all of your socials where people can find you, but there was no way I could say them. Would you like to run them down right now while we still have two minutes? <laughs> so the easiest, the easiest way to get in touch with us is number one, look at uh, us online at caregiversmartsolutions.com. Again, it's caregiversmartsolutions.com. Or you can just give us a buzz. The phone number is 888-585. 5022. Again, it's 888-585-5022. My name is Ryan. I am the founder of Caregiver Smart Solutions, and I can't wait to help you gain a little more peace of mind and time back in your life. Yes. And I can't wait 
to actually collaborate with you further on other things related to what Frank About Health has done in the past. There are speakers that have been on the show talking about AI and medical innovation that I want to introduce you to. As I mentioned earlier, I want to introduce you to Phyllis Quinlan and the founder of the Share the Care organization, Sheila Warnock. Um, who knows, maybe I should bring uh, Phyllis in next week to co-host the show if she's available. If not, we're still good. gonna do it our way, <laughs> you know. Um, let me see, I think I had some other things to announce about the future. Um, it was just a question actually. In the investment community of med tech, which I presume your company is a part of with yeah. whatever investors that have been able to help you launch the product and launch the company, what would you say is the predominant um, influence that AI has in healthcare today? Is it the elder population or are there other things that you might know of that you can give me some awareness of in the wow. investment community? Let me tell you something. And I know we don't have time, so this is going to be a cliffhanger, but I was just at the Let's week. Know Innovation Forum uh, a couple weeks ago. And let me tell you what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've learned about how AI is going to change health and healthcare for all ages is going to be amazing. And next Thursday, we can talk about that. Awesome. That was a good way to exit the show. And ladies and gentlemen, I was going to go ahead and show you the Beverly Hilton and talk about its history. But you know what? I'll just go ahead and, and uh, talk, send you some pics or show you some pics next <laughs> week. All right. Thank you, everybody, for staying tuned. Um, signing off from the West Coast and have a good evening, Ryan. And I guess I'll see you next week and I'll see you all next week right here on Frank About Health on talkradio.nyc and all of our social media. Have a good night. Mm -hmm.